We are back for another episode of Building the Nantahala Retreat here on a soggy day in Western North Carolina. Today we're gonna to be finishing the flooring with an LVP plank floor in the basement, but let's get started with something else that Jamie's been working on. So you built this entire frame in one piece. Are you a glutton for punishment? Do you not remember the outside frame? I won't lie, I'm getting a little nervous <laughs> now because if it doesn't fit this time, I just don't know what to say. If you, you know? guys don't remember or didn't watch the other video, basically Jamie was like, wop, 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 this is gonna fit in one try. I'm the man, this is gonna be awesome. Embellishment, embellishment. embellishment. And then the thing didn't fit. And so that was the outside trim. Now he's got this built. And it's been this whole debacle to get it here. It's now almost noon. <laughs> it's all worth it. Well, it's really going to be worth it if it doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't, well, I don't know. <laughs> get out the gasoline. It's some good entertainment, I guess. But uh, I do want it to fit. Well, Pretty all right. bad. Pretty Let's bad. try it. It's raining. Let's do it. Before we find out if it actually fits, let's see what it took to get this window frame here. And to start with, Jamie did this thing where he almost built something too big to get it out of his shop. Kind of like that guy on YouTube that built the car in his basement and then had to cut a hole in his basement wall to get it out. It was almost like that. And just for reference, this window trim's about 17 feet long and about six feet tall. done when you were building houses? Unfortunately, it's a real short answer to that, and that is absolutely not. Uh, everything I did was small pieces. Yeah. Because uh, I was doing it by myself, usually. Oh, yeah. So, this is definitely a two-man two, two -man job here. No doubt about it. But getting this window trim here was only half the battle getting it unloaded and then in the living room facing the right direction was the other half of the battle. Way easier to build it one piece and then it's like backing a Mack truck up to get it in the house. Yeah. It looks right to me. <laughs> Everything's looking pretty I good. I still have no idea. See, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think it's looking good. <laughs> yeah. Nice and even in unison. All right, now, um, all right, okay, ready? One, two, three, up, and then barely get the bottom of the line. Okay, drop it down. Oh, fingers. Okay. Oh, it's going. Hats off. Hey, good job. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Really do. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Are you too kind? <laughs> no, stop it. Oh, come on. All right, this is come the on. problem right here. You know, <laughs> he takes an inch and goes like this far with it. All right, hey, look, I mean, I, I'm pretty happy. I told the guys I would have just done the worm right here. If I could do the worm. Are you still recording, man? I, I would have done the worm right then. I would have gone back and forth about four times all the way across here. <laughs> In all seriousness, Jamie did a great job making this window frame in one shot and making it fit. I gotta hand it to him. And I'm glad it did fit because this would have been a ton of money down the drain if it didn't fit and we had to redo it. Hey, we're trying to kit out our tool belts a little better here. One thing I always lose is my bits. <laughs> Usually put them there and that, that works pretty good, but sometimes they fall through. So I got these fast cap magnetic things and, and they're not sponsoring us. I actually bought them. Uh, it's supposed to maybe go around your wrist or on your drill. I was hoping it would go like right here on my drill, but it's not staying. So we went with the tool belt mount. And so that's great. I can see them and I, they're really on there, like really gonna work. I'm not gonna lose my bits. And Jono's got his fully kitted with every style and Superman badge kind of style there. Hope like uh, strong magnets <laughs> don't, don't affect his pacemaker. You don't have a pacemaker, do you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We'll let you know how that works in a day or two. Ray's got it kitted out on his drill, and that's what I was imagining. Let's try that out. So you've got all your bits right on your drill when you need it on your impact. So try to shake those off. Shake harder, Ray. <laughs> See? I think it's going to work. See, I don't know if I'd want them on my drill. I don't know. It's pretty nice. Well, the amount of times people borrow your drill and grab the bits and put them in their pouch and don't put them back. Uh, yeah. 
this is probably not going to stay here. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's kind of like in my peripheral vision. <laughs> oh. Up next, we're installing the basement floor, which is an LVP floating floor. If you're not familiar, LVP stands for Luxury Vinyl Plank. And it's a great choice for a basement because it's not affected by moisture. I was able to fit all of the flooring we needed in the back seat of my truck for the whole basement, which is also a great thing if you don't have a truck and you're looking to replace a floor. We've installed several floors like this over the years, and some of them you can actually just cut with a utility knife, which makes it fast and easy. So that's what I tried to do first here. Ooh, man, this stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut this with a saw. Too hard. Yeah. Oh my gosh, not a chance. I attempted this first cut using our pull saw, but then we ended up getting out a skill saw and a table saw and cutting this stuff as if it were wood. Since this is a floating floor and it doesn't attach to the subfloor or concrete in any way, only to itself, the installation is a lot different than our flooring upstairs. One main difference is it's really hard to keep these first few rows that you're laying from moving all around while you're putting the next few rows onto it. Uh, we did put a spacer in to keep things off the door jam, but I'll show you what we did elsewhere. We've got our section here parallel to our finishing wall there, and it's hard to actually screw something down to hold this, because it's concrete. So I'm just gonna weight it down with a bunch of these boxes so it doesn't move now, and we've got a line drawn, so I think that's gonna work. And with that, we stacked the remainder of our material onto the flooring section we already had installed, and it actually worked really well. It did not move at all once it was weighted. After a little bit of practice, I actually found that you could install these pieces with no tools by basically installing the butt end and then tipping the previous piece with the piece you were installing up at just a little bit of an angle. The other tongue would snap into place, super easy, no tools required. I will say that this is not always the case. I've put in some of these floors where it was a battle to get them to click together. And sometimes they felt like they were gonna come apart way too easy. So I feel like we lucked out on this particular one. Just like on the upstairs floors, I was shooting for a random pattern on these butt joints to not have them align or break too closely as we are working down the floor. Hey, uh, hang on, we're getting this crazy stagger going here. Being able to actually pull pieces up and redo sections if you don't like the way it looks is another great advantage of using this type of flooring on a concrete slab. Checking our line here. Still on the line. Still on the line. We were able to finish out this 14 foot wide by 25 foot long room in less than two hours, which if you're wondering, was about half the time I was expecting to spend. <laughs> what is he shooting? I don't know. I hope it's not trim. <laughs> Right here, there's gonna be a wet bar, and that means there's gonna be cabinets sitting on the floor. With this type of floating floor, you do not wanna set cabinets on top of it, because then the floor can't shift and expand, and it could buckle the floor and make it, like, ruin it, basically. Now, I've seen that happen, so what we're gonna do is lay the flooring in here a bit, and then we will scribe where the toe kick of our cabinets are gonna be. We will cut that flooring like a quarter inch short of the toe kick, and then put it back in with the cabinet. My overall thought on this LVP flooring is that I was very skeptical, but this type had a padding that was built onto the back and it was fairly quiet underfoot, which was pretty awesome. And it went down super fast. This entire room was 30 minutes. It seems like we're done, yeah. but we're not. <laughs> the cardinal uh, amateur mistake of skipping all of the rip pieces everywhere in the hole downstairs. So now we gotta do the hardest part the last. This is Danish rye bread. It's sourdough bread. What makes it Danish though? It's the only place I've ever seen this kind of bread is in, in Denmark. And it's the secret behind the Danish open-faced sandwiches. They're Ooh. called smurplet. So Come again? Smurplet. And this freaking tool belt. And, and then they unless you naked. live in Solvang, California with Anderson's Bakery or close to Grand Central yeah, Station yeah, that'd be good. That'd in New York City. Kind of You're going to have to make it some here. You can see it's this coarse black rye bread that's um, sourdough. has a lot of kernels of flax and sunflower seeds and that kind of thing in it. And that's the basis. Then you bake, take that and then you put all kinds of things on top of it. And we're going to make three different kinds today. 
One of them with the potatoes, that's called a kartoffel One of them with um, liverwurst and then ham, and that's called the veterinarian's midnight snack. <laughs> when the veterinarian came out to help you, your, your calving in the process, he had to have a midnight snack. So that's the veterinarian's <laughs> midnight snack. And the last one is called a shooting star with fish and shrimp Ooh. and remoulade that I've made myself because you can't buy remoulade <laughs> in the U.S. <laughs> So that's the plan. I'm excited. And this it is a classic. Really We're this not going to be able to move. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, very heavy. You can see it's it's the sub substance. Oh substance wow! <laughs> it's like five pounds. Yeah. Oh man, he's putting shrimp on it now. Mm -hmm. This is a shooting <laughs> star. <laughs> I can't help but notice you got your eye on that liver mush. <laughs> oh, it's my eyes not on that liver mush. <laughs> Anthony, not at all. That's, that's all Jono's. Jono can have that. Anthony likes the liver mush the best. John said he was going to be super insulted if you didn't eat the liver mush, uh, by the way. I mean, I, I can't. I'm diabetic. Thank you, John and Anton, for sharing a little bit of your Danish culture with us and making us lunch. Jamie's finishing up his Danish lunch <laughs> with a Danish. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Up next, let's go for a ride on my camera, which is in a wall cavity with the flashlight on recording video so that I could pull it back out and see what was in there. And I'll tell you what I was looking for. Nate, our electrician's here and we just found a wire back here. It says blower. <laughs> and to get to that wire. Sorry, Nate. You're good. We had to take some rock off and cut the sheathing off the wall. And uh, you know, this is our fault. There's a switch right there for the blower. But the wire was coiled up and the insulators covered it and we just didn't see it and we did all the stone work. So, Nate just went fishing, which he didn't know he was gonna do today. <laughs> With this piece of ground wire, we hooked it and now we're gonna connect it to the firebox like it should have been. I'm gonna put this all back together like it never happened. Did it really happen, Ray? No. Did what, did what happen? Exactly. So, you know, if you're having a bad day and just wondering, you know, do other people make mistakes? No. So, um, in just a minute, this will all be hooked up and it never happened. That looks better. One other thing we're doing today is preparing these stairs for the installation of the treads and risers. What we're missing is a floor here on the platform. We're gonna use the same floor that we use throughout the main part of the house, which is this half inch flooring. Now, when we frame the stairs, we built this platform as if it's just another step, meaning that the rise from each step to the next and to the platform and leaving the platform, it's all the same. This one's about six and seven eighths of an inch and the material that's going on top of the platform is only a half of an inch thickness. And the treads are an inch. The treads are double that. So you're gonna put down two layers of flooring? I am. <laughs> I am. I'm gonna put down one layer of scrap flooring. Okay. I'm gonna glue and shoot it down, and then I'm gonna floor right over it again. Would that make it twice as good? It, it, it'd at least be double. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's what I'm gonna do right now. I have to do two platforms. Both of them are the same. I checked to make sure that they are, and then we would actually be able to finish the steps. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, I know what it's for, but if you don't know what it's for, it's so that you can see the trailer when you're backing up over the top of your tailgate. Yeah, it's next to impossible, man. It would take me like 30 minutes to get to the turnaround without this. Yeah, so this thing does have a big flip up gate, but it's not on there. And without the flip up gate, when you're reversing, you cannot see this trailer at all unless you're turning. And at that point, it's usually too late and you're going off the road. <laughs> it's <laughs> embarrassing. It is. We're both really good at backing up trailers, but given this trailer without the gate on it, it looks like we're totally amateurs. You may as well just have a blindfold on. Yeah. <laughs> you got a better shot of getting it straight. So that's a good way to be able to see it or you can kick some field goals. And uh, just remember to take them off for you get going about 75 down the highway. <laughs> As always, thanks for building with us today. We really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to get subscribed, ring the notification bell so you'll get our future videos and give us a thumbs up and we will see you on the next one.